Uh, good morning, everybody. 96B, Tzadik Vav Amud Bet, four lines from the first wide line. Omar Rav Yehuda, Omar Shmuel. Rav Yehuda said the name of Shmuel. Mekoyshesh, Mavir Arba Amois, Bishus Arabim Have. We know there's a story of Mekoshesh. What's the Mekoshesh? Everybody knows that there was a man in Klai Yisrael and it says that he was Mekoshesh Eitzim B'Yom HaShabbat. He gathered something like that. There are three different opinions in this Gemara of what that means. Okay? It has something to do with gathering. Okay? But it can mean all sorts of different things in gathering. Okay, so now it says the Gemara as follows. What was he doing? So according to the first Manda Omar, he was gathering them, to, and he gathered them to carry them. He didn't make piles. Making piles out of sticks is in Melacha of Me'amer. There's another Melacha called detaching sticks, gathering them by taking them off. And no. They were already, they were already detached. He just carried them. That's what he did. And remember the story is that Moshe Rabbeinu didn't know what punishment to give him. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him he needs to get a skila. That was the story. So the Gemara says, in the bright it says that he was actually harvesting, which means he cut them off the ground. That's why he got skila. Rav Achab Rabbi Yaakov, Omar, a third opinion, Me'amer Hava. He gathered them, he made piles out of them. Okay. So, what's the difference exactly to know what he did? The Torah says there was someone that did some milacha with wood. So, so it's, let's say you don't know exactly what it was. The point is, the Torah is saying he did one of the 39 milachot with wood. He gathered eitzim some way. Either he get Okay, it could be one of these. What's the nafkimina? What do we have to know the difference? Says the Gemara, Lechaderav, the Omer Rav, Matzasi Megila Stor and Beit Abchia. I found a hidden Megila. Okay, from the Beit Midrash of Rebbe Chia, the Katuv Ben. It's written over there. Isi Ben Yehuda Omer. Avot melachot abayim chaser achat ve'eno chayav el achat. How many melachot avot are there? Father melachot, main melachot. Forty minus one. That's the way we always say it. It's thirty-nine. Ve'eno chayav el achat. And you're only chayav one. What does that mean? It sounds like that if you did all of them in one concealment, right? Meaning. In between all of them, yet you haven't found out yet that it was asur to do what you've been doing. You've done, you've done all thirty-nine. You're only going to be chayav one chatat. Okay, if you did them all inadvertently. So the Gemara says achat v'tulo v'atnan avot melachot abe im chaser achat v'avinu b'miyana lomeli. We went through this kasha a few times in the Gemara. Why does it have to say the number of melachot in Perak Klal Gadol? If you, I can, we don't have count. So you read through the malachot, they list, they enumerate all the malachot. You want to know how many there are, count them. Why is that so important for the mission to say that there are 39? The answer was, To teach you that if you do all 39 in one concealment, they're actually like separate averot, and you have to bring 39 chataot, not one. So how does that work, that Mishnah work, with this teaching of Isi ben Yehuda, they only bring one. Therefore, it must be that you have to say, Aim of the achat me'em. Therefore, it couldn't have been that Isi ben Yehuda was arguing with this teaching. So he must have said something else. What did he say? There are 39 malachot. Ve'enu chayav alachat him. And there's one of them that you're not chayav skila for. Okay? So there is, the Yehuda is saying something else. 
There is one melacha from the 39 that you will not get skila. Um, and we don't know which one it is. And since we don't know which one it is, you can't kill somebody for any melacha because maybe it's that one. So now the Gemara says, Rav Yehuda, Pshita Leide HaMav Echayev. Umat Nita Pshita Leide Tolash Chayev. Rav Achav Yaakov Pshita Leide Ma'amer Chayev. So, Ma'asavar Hamiyat Lo Misavka, Ma'asavar Hamiyat Lo Misavka. So therefore, it comes out like this, that since there's a Machloket of what the Mekoshish Eitzim was doing, now, if you hold that he, what he was doing was carrying in the Rishut HaRabim, and the Torah says he gets skila. So you know you're safe about that one. You know that that one out of the 39, you are going to get skilah. So you'll only have a doubt about the other 38. And you won't be able to give skilah because maybe one of those 38 is the one that you don't get skilah for. But that one not. So depending on what you think the Mekoshesh did, because by the Mekoshesh it was very clear in the Torah that he got skilah. So you won't have this suffix. So one of them said it was carrying. So that one don't have a doubt about. The other one says... It was making piles. That one, you don't have a doubt. The other one says it was detaching. So that one, you don't have a doubt about. Okay? Tonu Rabbonon. Rabbanan taught. Hamikoshesh zet slafchat. Dechenu omer, vayu v'nei yisro b'amidba v'yimtzu ish. This is tzlafchat. Tzlafchat was one of the people that died in the Midbar and he only had five daughters. He didn't leave over any sons. You remember they were very great daughters and they came to ask Moshe Rabbeinu what should they do with the Nachala, with the portion of, father, of their father's portion in Eretz Yisrael. He was from Shevet Menashe. Moshe Rabbeinu asked Hashem. At the end they kept it, right? But he gave them an aid to an advice to marry someone within their tribe so that the land stays within their tribe. Okay? Fine. So, the, the Gemara says that this man that ch- violated Shabbat and was killed was that famous man, Tzlafchad ben Chayfer, that had the daughters. That's who it was. V'chein hu o'imer V'ayu v'nei Yisrael v'amidbo v'yintu ish V'halon hu o'imer avinu meis v'amidbo It says that they found a man being Mekosh Hashashin. Mekoshesh Etzim. Later on it says that when the daughters of Tzlofchot came to Moshe Rabbein, they said, Avinu meis ba-midbar. Our father died in the Midbar. Now, in both Psukim, it says Ba-midbar, Ba-midbar, in the desert. Ma'alahalon Tzlofchot. Afghan Tzlofchot, just like there was Tzlofchot, here too it's Tzlofchot. Divi Rabbi Kiva. Omad Rabbi Yehudu Ben Beseiro Akiva. Ben kachu ben kach ato osu liti nesadin. Whether you're saying the truth, that it was Slavchad, or whether you're wrong, and you're not saying the truth, and it really wasn't Slavchad, you're going to have to pay for that. Why? Because im Because if you're right, that it was Slavchad, the Torah, the, the Torah concealed from us who it was. It doesn't say, it says it was a man. And you go and reveal it. Why are you telling us? If you're right, it's Lashon Ara. Why are you telling us who it was? And if you're wrong, And if you're wrong, then you're just saying Moti Shemra. You're saying, uh, you're saying, you know, lies about a great tzaddik. Thank you. Um, Now, it happens to be that the daughter said our father died because of his sin. Ki v'chet o met. But if it's not Tzlavchad, then he died about something that was much lighter than this. Chidu Shabbat, or something that was done, let's say, maybe inadvertently, unwillingly. But for you to say that it was this man that did it on purpose, so the Gemara says, I have a question. Is there any yeah. still can Yes, because he got skila. Okay, so then what's the problem? You know that's what it was, so what's the issue? Rabbi was just telling you what the obvious is. No, so if he was right that it's Slavchod, yeah. fine, you're right that he did it on purpose, but the Torah didn't want us to know his name. It just said a man. So 
So why did Rabbi Kiva come to you? I'll tell you who it was. It was Tzlafchad. The Torah didn't tell us who it was Tzlafchad. So why are you revealing it to us? I don't know how he knew it, by the way. There's no else he knew it from... It, well, no, he knew it. The Gemara's about to ask. He knew it from the Gzair Shava. Amidbar, Bamidbar. So, so that's what the Gemara's about to ask. Basically what you're asking, the Gemara's going, how does he know it, Rabbi Kiva? Because of Gzair Shava, it means you find the same word. That means the Torah is teaching us Gzair Shavas. The Torah wants us to know. It's not like he kept it quiet. Maybe he didn't say it straight out in a positive. It was Tzlafchad, like Rabbi Kiva did. But the Torah wanted us to know, and that's why he put the two words together. That's the Gemara's next cash. It's kind of what you're asking. He learned it from Gzair Shavu. So the Gemara says, Gzair Shavu le Gomer. Gemara says, Rehud remembers, um, What is what is the problem? So the Gemara says because he really didn't have a Gzair Shavu. Because a Gzair Shavu, you, can, you cannot judge a Gzair You cannot make a Gzair Shavu yourself. That's the rule. We find it all over Shas. You'll hear this many times. The Gemara always says this. Adam loy don Gzair Shavu me atme. A person's not able to, even a great Tana, can't say, oh, I find the same word here and the same word here, so we're going to learn halachas. You have to have a tradition from your Rebbe, your Rebbe's Rebbe, your Rebbe, all the way back. You heard from your Rebbe, who told you that he heard from his Rebbe, who said this is Gisha, all the way back to Maishu Rabbeinu from Asinai. And this is an equation you can make. This is only for learning halachas, not for learning general Torah. No, but I don't know what you mean. But anything you want to learn from the Gzir Shavu, even like this, is not halacha, it's just to know who it was. You can't learn out. Only a Gzir Shavu, not other types of Drashot, other types of only this type of exer- right, yeah. one word from here and another word from here and and the same word yeah. right yeah right. A, you, a person can't do that so, so then how did he know so the message says how did he know the message says me v'yapilu hava okay so the Gemara is really saying like this Rebbe Akiva, he didn't have a problem. You know why he's not doing anything wrong? Because he's, he had Xer Shava. He had Xer Shava, so it's, the Torah is basically telling us. But Rabbi Yehuda ben Beteda, he never heard of this Xer Shava. He didn't believe in this Xer Shava, because he didn't have this Messiah. So therefore, um, according to him, why did Slavcha die when it says Kibchet Omet? Is mi ve'yapilu hava. Ve'yapilu is he was one of the people um, that wanted like the first Zionists, kind of the first um, the people after the Miraglim. They were Hakadosh Baruch Hu swore that anybody between twenty and sixty is going to die in the midbar and not make it into Eretz Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu said, Rabbi, we know we're about to go into Eretz Yisrael, we were, we were going to get in there in 11 days. 11 days. And then they would build the Beit HaMikdash, and then forever. Moshe Rabbeinu would be the, unbelievable. And they messed up with this, with the Miraglim, and, and they said, okay, you're not going in, you're going to have to die here, you're going to wander for 40 years. So what did some people do? They said, no. Okay. They, they started crying, the terrible... Okay, we're going to go in now. We're going in by force. Before the time, we're going in. We're going to win. Moshe warned them, don't go up. I'm warning you right now. Hashem said, decreed, it's not the time. And they went up, they tried, and they got burnt. They got killed. So that, that sin was way less than the sin of Kilul Shabbat. That's not nearly... That's the sin that he was part of. Okay? Fine. Anyways, Kayoitze Bedavar, the Gemara says, Ata Oime Vayicharaf Hashem Bom Vayelach. Similarly, we find, says the Gemara, that by Aaron and Miriam, that when they spoke about Moshe Rabbeinu and they said, even we, we're also Nevi'im, and we still stay married to our spouses, so Kadush Baruch who became enraged, Vayelach. And he left the the oil, 
the cloud of glory left the oil and Miriam became filled with tzarat. So when it says that Hashem became enraged, bum in them is Elashon Rabim. Belamit Sha'af Aaron Nitztora. This teaches that not only was Miriam, even though the Torah only says Miriam, became white like snow from the leprosy, but it means Hashem became enraged with both of them and Aaron also had leprosy. Same type of story. He said, you're going to get, you're going to have to pay for this either way. The Torah didn't tell us, and you're telling it to us. And if you're wrong, then you're just saying, about the bum. So the Gemara says, why is he, why, why is he saying that the Torah disclosed it? Um, no, um, concealed it. The Torah says, bum. Which is Lashon Rabim, which is not only Miriam. So the Gemara says, because the Yudim and Beseri says, Ahu ben Ezdifa ba'alma. Ben Ezdifa means that Kadush Baruch Hu gets upset. He got very, like, he, like, you know, Ezdifa is a kind of an excommunication when you get, like, uh, I, don't know how, I don't know exactly how they translate the word Ezdifa. But Ezdifa means when the Chacham, when the Rebbe gets upset with the Talmud, he looks at him like that, that's like an Ezdifa. Right away, and up to 200 years ago, there was a, there was a, there was a concept. You know, the Chassam Seifer, he got upset with his Talmud. He looked at him. We gave him a scream. Right away, the Talmud walked out of the room, took off his shoes. You know, it was such a thing. The God of Adar. You know, you, it's because it's, so that's what Hashem did with Aaron Akai. But he, did, but he didn't become, he didn't become white like, he didn't get leprosy. Tanya commanded Omer Af Aaron Nitztorah, the Chassiva Yifin Aaron El Miriam, Hini Mitzeras. There's one another brayser that goes like Rabbi Kiva that Aaron did have tarat, because it says that Aaron turned to Miriam vihinei mitzorat and she had tarat, and the brayser says vayifen Aaron means shepono mitzorate. He turned to Miriam, meaning he turned away from his tarat before Miriam got cured. He got cured, See, meaning Aaron saw that even though he got cured, Miriam still had it. Okay, so that one is also going to be a kiva that Aaron did have tarat. Um, this is the, 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 the Gemara continues now. If a person suspects his friend that his friend has done co- committed violated something, transgressed a sin, fine. So and it's and his friend is kosher. So loike begufay. The, the punishment is that he is smitten um, in his goof. Which means that if a person does other sins, HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't punish him, his body. First he gets hit, his car gets a scratch, fender bender, and then he has another thing, he loses some money in Corona, and this and that, and all these things till a person does teshuva. But if a person is um, then he gets hit right away in his goof, his body gets smitten. You know why? So they say a beautiful pshat over here from the Chassam Seifer. I just said about the Chassam Seifer. Um, the pshat is like this, because if a person does another sin, so Hashem says, okay, you know, this sin doesn't really come from him, from his own body. Because since the person is always judging others favorably, so Hashem, says, Hashem judges him favorably. Ah, it came from something else. Which means it's not really from his root. It's not his essence. Something happened. Okay, it's from something ancillary, you know, it's outside things. So then I'll just start punishing from the outside things too. It's not him himself. But once a person is not careful with that, and when he sees others doing wrong, he always suspects people. They're not kosher. He's not done the kavzchut. He doesn't judge others favorably. He sees someone doing something wrong, and he's right away, he says, ah! Or he, he doesn't even know if the guy was wrong, and he right away suspects them that he did something wrong. Oh, so Hashem doesn't judge him favorably either. So when the guy sins, Hashem says, okay, it's you. I'm not judging you favorably. That's the way you act. So I'll act. I know the truth. Hashem looks away if you look away. 
But now Hashem says, okay, it's you. So now you, you'll get punished, the person himself. Okay? And now it comes out that he will get punished for not only for these Averis, of being, suspecting others, but for all of his Averis. That's how they say. Okay, anyway, it's a pretty scary thing. So, but where, where's the proof of this? Because Moshe Rabbeinu said that Kalah Yisrael will not believe him that Hashem spoke. Hashem said, go to Egypt, right, the first mission, and tell the Jews that they're going to be saved. I'm going to save them. I'm going to take them out of Egypt. Moshe Rabbeinu said, they're not going to believe that I spoke with you. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knew that they would be, believe. Therefore, Om Aloi, Hei Ma'aminim B'nei Ma'aminim, V'ata in Tzif Chal Ha'amin. They are believers, the son of believers. But you, you are going to sin with a lack of faith. They are faithful, the sons of faithful ones. Hey, Ma'aminim D'chitiv, how do we know that they're faithful? Because the Torah says that after Moshe Rabbeinu told them the news, Vayamein Ha'om, the nation believed. B'nei Ma'aminim, they're the children of those who were faithful. Because it says about their father, forefather Abraham, Ve'emin Ba'ashem, and he believed in Hashem when Hashem told him that he will have a child, even though he was so old. But Ato in Tzayv Chodahamim, but you will fail. Shenemar Yan Lohe Man Tembi. Because it says in the Pasuk that Moshe Rabbeinu said he suspected Klai Yisrael that they were not believers. Even though they were, he says, since you didn't trust me, lahakti sheni, okay, the Pasuk says, now there are like about over 10 Pshatim exactly what um, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu meant when he said that you sinned by the rock because you did not believe in me. But at the end of the day, whatever that means, you could look in the Orachayim, the Ramban, in Rashi, he hit the rock, he didn't speak to the rock, he didn't make a Kiddush Hashem, there's all sorts of different Pshatim. But whatever it is, the Torah coins it as, you have to explain it, in, you have to fit into the words of the Pasuk. Ya'an lo he'emantembi. Because you, you had a chesaron, it was a lack of faith somewhere. On some level, even though Moshe Rabbeinu was the greatest ever, by far, in faith, but there was some sort of something there that was lacking on his level, which we should all uh, pray for. We should pray to, 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 to reach that sin. We'll never get there. Don't, don't judge Moshe Rabbeinu. On his level, it was a lack of faith. Okay, so we find that he had on his level, Moshe Rabbeinu's level, the Gemara says so, so that's it. The Torah says so. A lack of some sort of faith, so, and, and and guess what he was punished with? Begufo in his body. Right when he, um, didn't he suspected that Klai Yisrael wouldn't believe him? So he was choyshe b'chsherim. Hashem said, "Put your hand in your in your chest again. Take it out. You see, sarat. Remember that. So that was the punishment." We have to move very quickly. This is Agada to Gemara. And we're about to reach a Gemara. It's like mamish, the, the meat. It's, it's meat and potatoes. It's, so, and we're, and we're behind. Quite behind. We might have to have another shear this week. It's so gishmak. Uh, like Alan says, more shear, more Torah. Um, I, I don't know if we're going to have it this week. Because today it's Thursday already. Maybe tonight. I don't know. Okay. Um, if Hashem decrees blessings on a person, that comes quicker than if Hashem Chas Hashem decrees um, punishments. He had to pull his hand out when he put his hand in. Only when when he took it out while he was extracting it, it turned white. But when he put it in, it didn't, wasn't white. But when he when it got healed, it says there, not I, I said the wrong words before. It doesn't say 
He took it out. Vihi neyodu, and then his hand. It says, Vayotia mechekoi. Which is from within his chek. How do they translate the word chek there? Anybody see it? The exact translation they t- translate from his bosom, right? From the bosom, F- from his b- whatever, from his chest, from right? Is here, right? Yeah, bos- bosom here. So he had he put it inside. May why does it say he? T- we know it was already in there. Why does it say wi- from where? So it says mechek from with- when it was already within there, it was already healed. When Hashem healed it, he took it out from within his bosom, bosom. That then inside already it was healed, so therefore Hakadosh Baruch Hu brings the healing and the good, the blessings quicker than when He brings the punishments. Um, it's possible they say that the pshat is because Hakadosh Baruch Hu doesn't really want to punish a person ever. He only wants, just He has to, in order for so the person should have a tikkun, in order for the person should come back to his senses. But he, what HaKadosh Baruch Hu really wants, more than the punishment, is that the person should just do to shu, to shuvah himself. So he waits it out longer and longer, and he has more patience. But blessings that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to give, so he gives them right away. Okay. It says that Aaron's mate, his staff, swallowed the staffs of the magicians by Paro. So Rabbi Lazar says it was a miracle within another miracle. Because first of all, his snake turned back into the staff. And when it was a staff, it swallowed the staffs. Okay, because one is that it turned into a snake. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu made, that not as a snake did it swallow the other staffs. But when it already turned back into a regular piece of stick, it swallowed the other ones. Um... Okay, what do say? Hope your sleeves. So the Gemara is like this. Such a gishmak in Mishnah. Who's a machlokis in the Mishnah? There's a machlokis in the Mishnah between Rabbi Akiva and the Chacham. If a person throws from Rishut HaYachid to Rishut HaYachid, from a private domain to a private domain, but in between the two private domains, there is a Rishut HaRabim. There is a public domain. So we know that throwing, the Gemara learned that yesterday, we learned the source, throwing is a problem, from one domain to the other. But throwing from private domain to another private domain with a Rishut HaRabim in, in between, it was a machloket to Bekiva and the Chachomim. Bekiva said Chayav, Chachamim said Patur. So the Gemara wants to figure out now. There are many different options, many options here, of what the machloket to Bekiva and the Chacham were, is. Boy Rabba. Rabba asked the Shem, L'matu me astora pligi. I need some help over here, Rabbi Ready? I need the oilam. So, is the machloket yeah, you got the yeshiva. You learned this. You know how long we <laughs> we done an hour, I say. It's like uh, it's like a shot. I feel me, Baruch Hashem. But it's good. It goes into your neshama. In yeshivas, they can learn this this daf right here. Several weeks. Several weeks. <coughs> this mamish, there's a lot here. There's a lot because every part you have to explain with different shoyim and the lumbus behind it, and then you calculate through it. It's, it's if you're able to write as fast as a daf goes of course you should be right of course if a person is zeichet merits to write the Talmud Biyodoy, the Masho says Ashe mi shebole kam the Talmud Biyodoy. he says the Talmud Biyodoy, I pray if you come to El Mahab and your Talmud is in your hand he says it means to write but I think that it's more important sometimes sometimes if a person just writing he's not able to absorb so, okay, you ready? So the, the question is like this. I'll try to make it fairly 
simple, because it is not that difficult in the simple, but it's like this. Is the machlokas underneath 10? It's not so hard, everybody said. Listen, it's not hard at all, actually. Is it beneath 10 tfachim? Now, we know that the Rishut HaRabim only extends up to 10 tfachim high in the air. Above that is a makim p'tur. Your private domain in your backyard, you know how much you own? Halachically. You own your backyard. How much? How high? You go into the ear, you still own that. That ear space is yours. Till where? Till the heavens. Till the heavens, you own a lot of real estate. All the way up there. Forever. But in Rishut Rabim, the public domain is only where the public use. And that's up to 10 Tvachim, 40 inches high. That's it. Even though everybody's standing higher than that. But the usage is within 40 Tvachim, and that's a fact. Above 10 Tvachim is not Rishut Tarabim. Okay? So, you have this case, you have Rishut Yachid to another Rishut Yachid with the Rishut Tarabim in between the two. So, we have a Machloket. Is the Machloket, when you threw it, lower than 10 Tvachim? Ubehopligi. And the Machloket is as follows. The Ma'ar include the and we, we, we've learned this at the beginning of Shabbat, so this, therefore you'll understand this. There's a rule that Rabbi Akiva holds that kluta, absorbing, being caught in the ear, is as if you're placed down. If you're in the ear, in a domain, it's as if you, were, you, 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 you landed. Since you're beneath your... Anywhere in, between, in the tent, Fachin, since you're in the ear of Rishut Rabim, Kluta, Kluta Kolot means you're absorbed in the ear space of the Rishut Rabim, it's as if you landed there. Okay? Even though you didn't really land. And therefore, what you really did now is when you threw the item from this domain in here to this domain with Rishut Rabim in between, you threw it from a private domain and it landed here. While it's going in the ear, it's as if it landed. And then it landed and it went, picked itself back up and it went. That's the one on the so you have a saw, hotza'ah, going out from private to public, and then a hachnoso, an entering from public to private. So, so, um, so it seems like there's two problems according to Rabbi Akiva. Umar savar, but the Chachamim say patur. Why? Why you say patur? Because le'amin include the kumi shuhuncha. Because they don't they don't go for this. That it's as if it landed, and if it didn't land, and since it didn't land, um, so all you have is a hoitzah on akira, on uprooting from a private domain and a landing in a private domain. We don't have. And it's flying through in between Rishut and Abim. That's very nice. But for throwing, for throwing, this is very important what I just said, we don't find such a type of malacha. The only malacha we find for throwing is landing. And even Rabbi Kiva is in agreement that the only malacha we find for throwing is when it lands. But he says it did land. That's considered landing. Going through the ear space of a domain is as if it lands in that domain. Therefore, you have a problem. Chachamim says, it's not as if it landed in the domain, and therefore you don't have a problem. But if you explain the Machloka that way, that means that above 10, which is probably most normal cases you would think of, would, would actually be that way. If you throw something from your house to the next house or across the street, we'll see, we'll, see, we'll see in a second what we're talking about. If it's the next door neighbor, through the street, and the, we'll see in a second. But if you th- usually you throw it above 40 inches, right? throw a ball or something. But till now we said the Machlok is, is a very low throw with intent Fachim. But if it would be a higher than intent Fachim, everyone would agree that we are called Patur. Everyone would agree that you're Patur. Why? Because the, um, the only time we ever find, you're not really in the Rishut Rabin. So why, was, why should it be Chayav? Everyone agrees that if I go straight from a Rishut Yachid to a Rishut Yachid without anything in between, for sure not a problem. So what, what should be the problem? Ah, no, 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 there's a Rishut in the middle here. And Kluta Kamisha Huncha, 
in the airspace as if it landed, according to Rabbi Akiva. But that's only within the Rishut HaRabim's airspace. But above that airspace, you're not in the Rishut HaRabim. So why should it be Chayav? Everyone would agree, you're Patur. The only time we ever find that you'll be Chayav when you pass through the airspace of, of above the airspace of Rishut HaRabim, not even in the airspace, is only by Moshit. What's Moshit? Passing. Because if you remember, when we explained the Mishnah, it goes like this. We had last week's Pasha. It says, how many wagons did the Bnei Merari use? Four wagons. They had the Mishkan. They, they took it apart. And then they had four wagons set up. One on the right, one on the left, and one on the right, one on the left. One, be, like, like, you know, two rows. Right, left, and behind it, right, left. So now they would pass the beams from the one from the back one, the back right to the front right, the back left to the front left. They were passing them, the Levian, the children of Merari, one to the other. That is the type of malacha. So that is a special halacha by passing. Okay? You pass from hand to hand above ten tfachim from a private domain, the wagon, to the other private domain, the other wagon through the ear space between the wagons, to the Shut Rabim. Okay, so that's a special halacha for passing. But for throwing, for throwing, or for walking, there's no such source. Because you're not in the Rishut Rabim, you're above. So everyone would agree that there's no such halacha, because, why not? Because there's no clue to Kemish Why is cl- there's no clue to Kemish no Because a clue to means if you're absorbed in my ear space, then you landed inside of me. But you're, if you're above Rishut Rabim, you're not in the ears of Rishut Rabim. It can't land. Okay? Now, Can't pass it, but what? The challah idea. Yeah. And challah, you're not allowed on Shabbat, well, on any day. But in Shabbat, right, you think about challah, you're not allowed to pass it from hand to hand. Right. You have to put it down. To put it down. It's far to throw. They have a minute to throw, right? Yeah. So you're allowed to throw. What, where does that come from? I would love to know. I don't know. Because I, I thought that uh, the Gemara says you're not allowed to throw one, one type of food. Okay. Pass, bread. Right. So I was always wondering, these people that throw bread, I know that it comes from something, they have a source for it. I'm just wondering how that works with the the Gemara. I never understood. It's like the so dafka. You're supposed to put it down? No, because by, by Avelus, by mourners, mm-hmm. the meaning is to put it into his hand. Mm-hmm. So therefore, we don't put it into the hand. You're supposed to yeah, put it down next to him. But the Svaradim have a meaning they throw. So leave it up to Mike. He's making a hashvo. He's equating it to this Gemara here with passing and throwing. Remind him of the halacha. Remind him you're allowed to throw. Above the tenth bottom. Because the beginning of the Shabbat meal, you have to start already with the halachot, halachot of Shabbat. So you start off with the, with the first melacha that the Gemara of, of the whole Masechta is Hitzah. And you start going through that halacha. This is beautiful. So, okay. So now, okay. We have to have another shir today. It seems like we have to have another shir today. I don't know if the Elm can make it, but we're it's it's hard. It's it's okay. If I would say barbecue tonight, steak tonight at um, seven o'clock. Anybody anybody going to say no? Everybody's going to be here, right? Okay, so I have something much better than a barbecue. Shia daf tonight, seven o'clock. Of course, bring your friends. Bring your friends. Come, Schmack. Okay, so now let's invite them. So we have this machlokes here. Yeah? Uh, so, so the machlokes between Rabbi Kiva and the Chachomim is beneath, in the earspace of Rishus Harab. 
and you're throwing it. And the Machloikah says, do you say Klutu Kemishu Hun Chadami? Or you don't say Klutu Kemishu Hun Chadami? But everyone would agree that above 10 Tvachim, the ear space above 10 Tvachim, you're not in the Rishut Rabim, so for sure you're not going to say that you're going to be absorbed, because you're not in the ear space to be absorbed. Now, why am I getting so excited? Because according to this, let me just finish, you have to go, uh, let me just finish this last thought over here. In the Mishnah, the Mishnah goes on to say that if you pass an item from one porch to the other porch through the Rishut Rabim, above ten Tfachim, there it says in our Mishnah, if you pass it, you're Chayav. If you throw it, you're Patur. That now goes according to everyone. That has nothing to do with the statement before that there's a machloket Rebbe Kiva and Chachamim about throwing an item between Rishut HaYachir, Rishut HaYachir, and Rishut HaYachir in the middle. Because they're talking about beneath 10. But the next case in the Mishnah, which is above 10, everybody agrees that you're going to be patur if you throw and chayav if you pass. Why? What's the difference between passing and throwing? Because passing we have a source for. And throwing, we don't have a source for that. Okay? So now, okay. Oidilmo says, Gamar, that's optional, you have to go. Uh, maybe I'll just go for another. If we're having another shir tonight at 7 o'clock, if people could come, it's a big mitzvah, or, or at least make sure you, 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 you see it. You, because I feel like if we don't do it this week, we're going to start. I'm seven o'clock. Well, Mincha seven forty-five. Yeah. Okay, so it'll be a shorter share and. Is that Hashem? Seven, I think. Yes, Shukayach. Maybe we should stop here. We should do this later today. Okay, we're tight. Chazak Baruch. Everybody have a great day. These Gemara.